Uh, good morning. So, we continue our discussion on recalling some of the embedding theorem and also stating and probably proving some results on inequalities which will be used for the variation of formulation. So, we discussed the embedding theorems in the case of W 1 p. Now, we will simply quickly state the embedding results uh, for general m and p. Okay. Of course, so you have what happens when m equal to n. So, uh, for m greater than or equal to 1, m equal to 1 we have studied and p is the growth, okay. p an integer. So, let me quickly state something and then derive something trivial. So, here omega subset of R n, I will not write it as a theorem, but it is basically a theorem which requires uh, non trivial proof. Some of them you are already seen it, okay. R n B of class earlier it was C 1. So, you need more smoothness C m. So, the first one is that earlier we have seen 1 less than or equal to p less than n. In this case, u p less than n by m. Okay. Then you have w m p of omega embedded in L q for all <coughs> q in <coughs> p 2 we do not call that as p star, p star is precisely reserved for the that embedding we call it p bar where p bar is equal to uh, is exactly like the 1 by m n uh, 1 by p 1 by p minus m by n when m equal to n it was nothing but p star and which is nothing but p. So, for all these p you have your embedding thing uh, 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 sorry not exactly p bar this should be 1 by p bar ok 1 by p bar ok. And the other case when p equal to n by m that is earlier when my m was there. So, you will have W m p of omega contained in L q of omega embedding for all q in p to infinity okay. and you do not get it at infinity. And third one when p greater than n by m you get the classical smoothness. So, you get W m p of omega contained in L infinity of omega and in this case and you also have this one norm t power alpha of u that is embedding at L infinity is less than or equal to constant on the norm u at m p in a and you get something extra moreover you get in fact norm of d power alpha of u of x you get some point is uh, held type inequality ok d power alpha of u of y is less than or equal to uh, constant into modulus of x minus y power theta. So, let me remove this theta and norm u at the w m p of omega and what is this theta? It is some sort of a, so k is equal to with the integer part of m minus n by p and theta is equal to the uh, integer part and this is the fractional part m by p and uh, this is what it says that uh, this is for uh, mod alpha equal to k. So, you see it is not e, not only that it is in w p is in L infinity is infinity. So, it basically says that. So, this implies w m p of omega is embedded in this implies that precisely tells you that it implies in c k of omega bar 
and you the d power alpha of u with mod alpha is equal to k is an extra inequality. This is something like which you already see such inequalities you have already seen. This is the case. So, if you have, so in this case you look at here. So, if p greater than n by m, so just a small remark. So, p greater than m by uh, n by m, that is that is m p greater than n. So, you see m bigger and bigger means that it is the derivative, m derivatives, the more smoothness and p means the growth. So, you see. So, what it requires is that the product if you have more and more higher derivatives that means m is large you can make m p given p you can make m large if you have a thing more and more derivatives is in w on p this thing. And if given a derivative if p is also if the growth is big still you can make m p greater than 1. So, it plays a role which one depending on your problem you can see which one has more. So, it is a derivative or the growth or both if that is sufficiently large it tells you that it will be in some smooth class that is the kind of thing. So, you can it plays a role the m and p. Okay. So, for example, if you have m equal to n equal to 3, m equal to 1, p equal to 2, you get your h 1 of omega in 3 dimensions contained up to L 6. <coughs> okay. For in the other hand n equal to 2, m equal to 1, p equal to 2, you get h 1 of omega up to L q for all q in n to inf uh, uh, all q in 2 to infinity you see up to infinity you get it. So, even though you are started with u in L 2 and uh, grade u is in L 2 that grade u in L 2 gives you that it is in L q and for if you take. So, you can play with it how. So, according to your problem and the regularities which you do and you can uh, prove this thing and p equal to 2 you get your h 2 of omega is in contained in uh, c 1 of omega part. So, you see so you have that kind of result you have seen that h 1 in one dimensional case uh, it is in continuous absolutely continuous but h 2 that uh, the h 1 functions need not be continuous. But if you go to h 2 you will get uh, differentiability. So, you can play with it. So, if you this kind of results uh, embeddings are used to prove that weak solutions are classic. Okay. So, you first to prove the so that is a kind of idea first you prove the solutions in weak solutions uh, in certain uh, spaces sobrio spaces and then prove whether the obtained solution is in a bigger sobelo space bigger in the sense that not the largeness of the thing bigger derivative or bigger growth accordingly you will be able to prove that the obtained solution in sobelo space become classical smooth and you will be able to prove. So, the method of uh, weak solutions also uh, together with the embedding will be able to use to prove the classical solutions we may see some of them later. Okay. So, with this let me go back to the remarks on Sobolev inequality. This is some remarks on Sobolev inequality because these things you have already proved uh, thing. So, so make it is nice to it is a it leads to some other problems. So, what is Sobolev inequality for 1 less than or equal to p less than n norm u at L p star is less than or equal to some constant into norm of grade u at L p okay. where p star is equal to n p by n minus p. Okay. So, for the uh, 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 I can also use instead of this constant 
I can put the constant here also. Of course, this if you put it here, see. So, looking for what is the bus constant? Bus constant C bus. Of course, C bus has to be less than or equal to grade u at p by norm u at p star. Okay, that uh, uh, this should hold for all u in w say 1 p of omega. So, C bus uh, uh, for all u in w 1 p of omega these constants are only true in uh, this space ok not in w 1 p space ok. So, let me call this to be S n p omega. So, you call this bus constant. So, you actually, so the bus constant is the smallest of all these possibility right. So, bus constant here means uh, the bus to you, the largest to you equivalently the smallest of the right terms. Uh, so, it is actually a minimization problem infimum of u not equal to 0 and you can write it as normalize it norm u p star equal to 1 is so you are normalizing how big is the gradient. Gradient of u at p uh, where u is in w 1 p naught of omega that is your bus constant doing it that way. So, let us uh, start with omega is r n. omega equal to r n I use a dilation trick. Uh, so, I am eventually going to show that the bus constant is independent of omega dilation. I can define for u lambda of x is equal to u of lambda x for w 1 p of r n in R n means it is the same as W R P of R n naught for lambda positive. Then you can compute this I will leave it as a very simple exercise it is nothing much to do it, but you just compute it your gradient of u lambda at p by this ratio this is ratio is more important this ratio will give you lambda power minus of 1 plus n over p uh, p star minus n over p into gradient of u by u. This is in p uh, p by gradient of u at p star, but you can see by the definition of this uh, 1 plus n by p star minus n over p is equal to 0, you can do that. So, this term is not there actually, so you see this term is 1. So, the ratio of gradient of u lambda, so for any u the ratio does not change uh, that is what you will get it. So, to use it to use this I immediately prove that uh, the uh, S and P these are all some interesting results. So, that is what I do. So, consider now this ball omega m is equal to B 0 m ok and you. So, uh, let me write down your S m is as I will write in terms of this square. So, infimum of grade u. So, let us consider uh, in the h, h 1 case h 1 of not of omega. So, we, you can do it the other case. So, let me do this one gradient of u at L 2, but u not equal to 0 grade norm of u at 2 star is equal to 1 ok. And let us do this in omega m case. So, uh, this is a decreasing function you can immediately see that. So, if you have an omega m 
and you have an another omega m2 so this is your omega m m1 and if you have your m2 so if i take any u in h1 not of omega 1 m omega m1 and then i can extend by zero this you have seen that if the boundary values are zero you can get it you can actually get u tilde is in h1 of omega m2 so m omega m2 cons is a bigger thing so you have uh, every h1 not of omega m can be considered as a subset of uh, subspace of h1 not of omega m2 for a bigger omega 2 and you are uh, taking an infimum so it decreases so sm is decreasing okay so that means sm2 less than or equal to sm1 but i can do something more using the dilation so you can do this is a small exercise if you want there's nothing using the dilation i will give you the proof in words but you write it using the dilation every function in omega m so that means if you take a u in h1 not of omega m m1 there exists uh, any lambda so small lambda other lambdas you can have lambda positive you can get a u lambda in h1 not of omega 2 right you can uh, dilate it so you can omega 2 and vice versa uh, in the vice versa in the sense that uh, uh, so that is what you can dilate so omega 1 function can be dilated to get functions in there on omega 2 functions can be dilated to get omega m 1 function. So, every function in omega m, uh, h 1 naught of omega 2 there is a function in there and for which the ratio does not change from the dilation argument the ratio does not change. So, the infimum will be the same. So, what I want to show is that uh, the same, similar thing vice versa as well and you can show that s m 1 is equal to s m 2. So, every ball your uh, sublow constant is the same as far as the ball is concerned. Now, for general omega so every omega m 1 the balls uh, the s m 1 so sublow constants are the same. Now, for general bounded omega what you do is that you can translate. So, you take any general o omega in such a way that uh, uh, the center is an interior point if it is not an interior point you can translate it <coughs> by translating the corresponding solo constant would not change it. Okay. So, you can always assume and then you will can find balls here and balls here. So, you get uh, uh, it will be squeezed between two balls and for the balls you already seen that uh, the uh, SM1 uh, say decreasing function and then you can actually prove that uh, omega uh, the S, uh, S, uh, S uh, P N P omega is independent of omega S N P and uh, there are more results. Uh, some more results in this direction you can actually get some estimates and all that to a thing. But there is one more result about Aubin and Talenti I want to mention in this one result of this requires proof ok results of for Aubin Talenti. Uh, uh, the what they have constructed is that the infimum is in when omega equal to m omega equal to r m the infimum is achieved infimum is achieved only for the function. So, they give classify the all the functions where the uh, infimum is only for the functions. Uh, u of x is equal to epsilon into is constant into 1 plus modulus of x 
square minus n minus 2 by 2 and for this function u epsilon of x is equal to some constant c epsilon into epsilon plus. So, the entire classification is given minus n minus 2 by 2. Okay. So, for omega equal to r n the infimum is achieved only for this function. From here can deduce again I will change it as a simple thought process it is not a computation it is about the thought process reduce infimum is not achieved for any other omega infimum is not achieved for other omega the reason is trivial if you uh, that means you will be working with h 1 naught of omega suppose the infimum is achieved for h 1 naught of omega then you can extend by 0 and you can see that such functions uh, will achieve the infimum in r n, but for r n functions these are the only place uh, the functions for which the infimum is achieved. So, uh, so I want to make some more remark and this also used for later you will see that uh, uh, for example, h 1 naught of omega is uh, contained in l q 2 star l, uh, l q of omega uh, for all for say 1 less than or equal to p yeah h a p is already taken to be 2. Okay, so, uh, thing l q of omega for all q in 2 to 2 star that is 2 star is nothing by 2 n by n minus 2 and later so uh, you can actually see that uh, h uh, uh, I will make some uh, not about this h 1 naught of omega these are all some compact embedding which will say you can get a compact embedding in L q for q in 2 to 2 star <coughs> open and not compact for q equal to 2 star. So, such things are can be proved. So, with this uh, let me go to some remarks on compact embedding and then later we will go to inequalities. Now, compact embedding ok. In general compact embeddings are not true compact there are special cases you can do it embeddings are not true for unbounded domains true for unbounded domains. For example, whatever be the choice of m p r n, m p of r n which is an unbounded domain is never compact, very, is a very general argument I will tell you now, never compact in any L q you see L q of R n and R n. So, you there is no there, this is a very general proof W m p of R n whatever be the higher choice of p and m and whatever be the small choice of uh, q it cannot be compact. This is done by a general argument. So, what do you do that you choose balls. So, this is a good uh, argument which can uh, prove not only for R n for any other domains many other unbounded domains. <coughs> so, choose balls b 1, b 2 etcetera these are disjoint, but translation same type disjoint, but translations of b 1. 
which you can do it in R n translations of V 1. So, what do you do is that you have a ball of radius similar ball that is what you want you want a balls a family of balls with the uh, uniform radius from below. So, you have the same ball I do it like this ok. So, you can start with even B naught if you want B naught then translate B 1 in a direction ok it does not matter you want a disjoint balls of the same radius ok that is the thing same radius whatever it is. That is what I say if you can have this proof will work if you take any unbounded domain for which you can construct any disjoint family of balls of a uniform radius ok. So, uh, what do you do is that so you first do so you call it this to be any B r. So, B naught so you choose phi so you first choose a phi in uh, domain of R uh, the uh, compact support R eh? and then you can normalize it. So, that such that norm of phi at the w m p of R n is equal to 1 that is possible you know so many functions exist and normalize it where and then you compute it uh, your norm phi at L q whatever be your q you call this to be a and this will be definitely positive ok. Now, phi j is the translation. So, the phi is uh, domain of R n such that support of phi is in B naught. Now, phi j is the translation translation of phi to B j that means the support of V j is in V j support of V j is contained in V j. You see hence this norm of V j is again equal to 1 W m p equal to 1 and uh, A is also equal to norm of V j in L q which is positive. So, this can never be compact because this is about phi j is a in bounded in bounded set in bounded set in uh, w m p you see w m p of r and but uh, phi j s have disjoint supports uh, and uh, phi uh, j is not Cauchy in L2 LQ. So, it can never convert strongly. So, that is what you want not Cauchy in LQ ok. So, it is a kind of a general argument tells you that uh, in general unbounded domains uh, there are some few results uh, I want to again recall so that you will be immediately comfortable. There is one uh, though you have studied already. So, let me uh, just recall this theorem theorem I am not going to prove anything ok. Uh, you have seen already in some form or other there are many relics lemma. So, I do not know. Uh, so, let k be a compact set this is one theorem let k be a compact set in R n. Set in R n define h 1 So, you have an H 1 k of R n such that V is in H 1 of R n H 1 of R n then uh, such that the support of V support of V is in k ok. And then uh, there is a compact embedding. So, full H 1 is there, but if you are looking 
compactly embedded in L2 of R. So, that is a one theorem and this theorem can be used to prove immediately I will give this proof and then stop it and then we will continue again. This is an immediate corollary uh, is that assume omega is bounded assume omega is bounded then one h 1 naught of omega is compactly this is what we will be immediately using for our variational formulation and h 1 also it is true if omega is smooth omega compactly contained in L 2 of omega if omega smooth. Okay. The proof is now uh, immediate. So, let me give the proof based on that. What you do is that there is an extension operator let p from h 1 of omega or h 1 naught of omega. If omega is smooth you have an extension to h 1 of r n extension ok. Then now omega is bounded. So, you can omega is bounded choose a k compact k is trivial ok compact k such that your omega bar is contained in interior of k contained in k ok. So, what you can do from here then so we so actually combining these two you can actually define and actually an operator is so we can actually this gives you a combining you can get a prolongation operator prolongation q actually from so q actually from h 1 of omega or h 1 naught of omega or h 1 naught of omega to h 1 of r n k. So, you can define an extension operator in such a way that uh, so it is zero outside k. So actually, this will get it. So basically, you have an operator q. Uh, so this is your operator q, and then from here to here, you have an L two of R n. So this is a restriction operator. So q is an uh, operator. So you have an identity this is an identity operator which is continuous okay. and from here no here that is uh, oh, so this is the q operator so this is a compact operator this is continuous and by uh, the previous theorem this is continuous is actually compact okay so you that's what the theorem by theorem and then you have a restriction operator. So, you restrict to L 2 of omega restriction and this is a continuous operator. So, you have from here to here compact ok. So, I will uh, state one more theorem in general W 1 p in the next class we will uh, in the next uh, uh, lecture we will uh, define one more class uh, uh, one more theorem and then we prove some uh, uh, inequalities quickly. Thank you. Thank you very much.